Hey guys, today is going to be a short video addressing why your superworms may be dying in the larva stage, pupa stage, and as full grown adult. But first I'd like to share a video and a picture from a fan who sent them in. Their name is Caleb. Hi Caleb. This was quite the shot. This is a superworm pupa emerging from its larva husk. This is super exciting as I have never witnessed this myself. Thank you Caleb for sending me this video and contributing to the channel. Alright, now back to the video. Let's start off with the larva. Superworms will straight up eat each other if they are lacking moisture. I found one being eaten alive after freshly molting. Unfortunately, I did not capture it on video. However, I did not let the worm go to waste as it was still moving and I fed it to my leopard gecko. Waste not, want not. I make sure they go no period of time now without something fresh. Another reason could be temp. They are not as resilient as mealworms. They do slow down, but they will eventually die or be eaten by less lethargic worms. A good way to avoid mass die off is to always wash everything, and I mean everything, you feed them thoroughly to best avoid pesticides. Keep your temperatures closer to 80 degrees and feed them often. If you do this, your superworms should survive and thrive just fine. Now for pupa. While I have only ever had a few pupa die, I do have some ideas as to why this happens. The first being that I do happen to see a lot of people place their pupa all together after their worm changes. I do not suggest this due to the beetles hatching and being thirsty and may start eating a pupa within a day or so. I keep all of mine completely isolated until they become beetles. I normally let them sit a day in their container or until they turn an orange or brown color before introducing them into one of my three colonies. The temperature requirements are the same as the larva and the pupa. Too cool and they will die. And last lack of humidity. It depends highly on where you live. My home humidity stays around 40 to 50 percent, so I do not have to provide extra moisture to my pupa. However, if you live in a dry area, I would suggest keeping the humidity high in the area you keep your pupa. You can even place a bowl with wet napkins in it in a closed off area along with the pupa to boost humidity. You can also give them a very light mist or place them under or on a shred of napkin to allow the water to absorb. Alright, now we're going to finish up with the beetles guys. My beetles rarely die outside of my expected age range of 4 to 6 months. Females are prone to die first. I believe they exhaust their body to the point that they can no longer function and they are the ones to typically live less than 6 months. I am experiencing die off now, which I believe are the original 20 to 30 beetles of my colony back in July. I have been having random females die in the same manner periodically. When Zephobus moria beetles begin to die, they start to not be able to control their legs. They will almost always flip onto their back and flail their legs slowly, randomly, and open their jaws wide periodically. They will stay like this for days as their body slowly stops moving. It is extremely sad. I'll talk about how we can actually use this in an upcoming video. If your beetles are dying in this manner, it seems to be natural as it is very consistent in the way they die and it only ever happens to a few. If you have not seen my sexing video, link is in the description and in the card above and see if it is a female or not. I'd wager it is. If it is, leave me a comment. Expect mass die off from males and females about six months into the colony's life. I am just now starting to have males die off and having one or two a day is becoming normal. I expect it to end after 30 beetles have died. I collect their corpses for another purpose, which I will cover in an upcoming video. To prevent beetle death, the same basic things that kill worms will kill the beetles. However, the beetles are more resilient to temperature. If it's too cold for them, their eggs may not hatch, or they may take longer to hatch, and they could just potentially stop reproducing altogether. Which is actually something my large colony recently faced. Who could have imagined that a difference of 6 feet in height would be enough of a temperature difference to allow one colony to breed and not the other? It's really weird and really interesting. So the takeaway from this video guys, temperature is the most important thing. So that's it guys. If you like this video and have it in your critter loving heart, give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.